Welcome to Photos and Travel, a show that introduces you to fascinating places around the world. Please welcome our host and tour guide, Jonathan Van Bilsen. Hello and welcome to this episode of Photos and Travel, where we bring the world to your doorstep. Today we're going to visit the Atosha region of Namibia, formerly known as German West Africa. Namibia is famous for having the highest sand dunes in the world and the second largest canyon, as well as an abundant population of wildlife, which we will explore right after these messages. Namibia is located on the Atlantic coast of Africa between Angola and South Africa and is about the size of Germany, Texas or Alberta. Today we're going to focus on the northern region known as the Atosha Pan, a large area which forms part of the Kalahari Basin. This area is a hollow in the ground in which water collects and salt deposits remain. Naturally, this area will attract an abundance of wildlife. I flew into Windhoek, the capital, and spent some time looking around before connecting with my guide Altus, who had driven 13 hours from Cape Town to meet me. We headed northwest for a five-hour drive, spending the night in Twyfelfontein, where I was introduced to some ancient history of this relatively obscure country. I checked into the Twyfelfontein Lodge, a beautiful oasis on the edge of the Namib Desert. This area is famous for some of the best examples of Bushman engravings in southern Africa. I quickly dropped my gear and headed to the archaeological site before it was too dark to see these ancient wonders. While rock engravings are found all over the world, the rock art engravings at Twyfelfontein are the largest and most important concentration in Africa, with over 2,500 petroglyphs in a variety of different styles. This World Heritage Site dates back 10,000 years. It is unique because rock paintings are usually found in caves, but here the engravings are found in the open air. The lodge is constructed with thatch roofs and natural stone. The paint colors blend in with the surrounding rock formations, minimizing the visual impact of the buildings which are set into the rocks. We depart the area at sunrise for our trek to see Namibia's vast wildlife and the Atosha Pan. Altus deflates the tires slightly to give us better traction in the Kalahari Desert. After a dusty five-hour drive, we arrive at the entrance to Atosha, ready to visit the area where Namibia's elephants, giraffes, rhinos, and leopards run free. While in the Atosha region, the Apache Game Lodge is a wonderful resort on the outskirts of the desert. The Atosha region is 20,000 square kilometers, approximately 20% larger than Lake Ontario. It is home to one of the largest wildlife sanctuaries in Africa. In 1954, 26 elephants were counted in this region, and through protection and harsh poaching laws, today's population numbers 2,500. Due to the infrequent rainfall, most animals in this area gather around watering holes, which gave me a fantastic opportunity to leisurely view these magnificent creatures. The feet of Namibian elephants are much larger than those of their relatives in East Africa. The soft desert sand has forced nature to evolve, so it's much easier for these giants to walk in the desert. Elephants live to be about 80 years. During their lifetime, they develop five sets of teeth. Because each set is softer than the previous one, it forces them to constantly seek softer vegetation in different regions. This keeps the mammals on the move and ensures against overfeeding. These magnificent beasts have a language all to themselves. They communicate using a sound well below the human threshold of hearing. Foot stomping, mock charges, and low frequency rumbling generate seismic waves in the ground well below what we hear. These sound waves have been measured to travel up to 32 kilometers along the surface of the Earth. These giant mammals are very sociable and live in family units where everyone looks after the young. When males become teenagers, they're forced from the herd and made to find their own way. 
Females will push them away and eventually they get the message. They will join other groups and mate among them, avoiding inbreeding which makes for a much healthier species. It was recently discovered that 10 days to 2 weeks before giving birth, a mother-to-be starts broadcasting the impending arrival of her calf. There appears to be a great deal of sound emitted at these very low frequencies. Biologists are hoping to identify an entire vocabulary of expressions, maybe even an elephant alphabet. Again, nature shows her wisdom by keeping tusks from growing during the first two years of a baby elephant's life. This allows for breastfeeding, ensuring there is no damage to the mother. The little ones are fun to watch, as they have great difficulty controlling their trunks, making every adventure a learning experience. Elephants are very protective of their young, and each baby is raised by a group of nannies who look after the newborn if mom is feeding or just out for a stroll. As soon as danger threatens, be it lions or bull elephants, they quickly rally around the calf, ensuring it will not be put in harm's way. Elephants love frolicking in the sand or mud. It not only keeps them cool, but also protects them from the ultraviolet rays of the sun. Of course, other animals also visit the watering holes, but there's a pecking order and no one drinks until the elephants have finished. Zebras are extremely vulnerable at a water hole and will arrive in large herds and only stay for a short time as their safety is constantly threatened. One of the most spectacular animals on the planet is the mighty giraffe. They gracefully stroll across the plains, eating foliage at the top of trees. There are four distinct species of these giants, the Maasai, the Northern, the Reticulated, and Southern giraffes. These species are divided into nine types, two of which live in Namibia. Animals are most dangerous when a mother has been separated from her young. And when we approached this young giraffe, we did not know where the mother was. I turned to see her behind me and we quickly darted out of her path. Giraffes have a very powerful kick and a Land Rover would be no match for its force. Fortunately, we made it to a safe distance without any issue. Giraffes are most exposed when drinking, as they have to spread their legs wide in order for the heads to reach the water. You'll never see a single giraffe at the watering hole. They visit in groups with two or more keeping watch while they drink in turn. While the elephant population in Africa is growing by 3% per year, the giraffe population is shrinking by 40% over the past 15 years. Fortunately, however, Namibia is the only African country where the giraffe population is on the rise. The zebras of the Kalahari Desert are different from their other African counterparts. The bottom portion of their legs are free from stripes, but what I noticed most was their bellies were bloated. I asked Altus if they were pregnant, but smiling he explained, due to their vegetation in the region, they end up with a great deal of gas. He slowed our vehicle and when we neared one he told me to roll down the window and inhale deeply. Enough said. We came across a very unique looking secretary bird. It is the largest flying bird in Africa. Elephants seldom fight with each other. These males are sparring in order to hone their battle skills should the need for combat arise. It is rare the entire area becomes a lake 
but it does happen. And when it does, the water stands about 10 centimeters deep and draws thousands of animals from near and far. Here we see a masked weaver bird building his upside down nest. Once he's completed the project, he invites a female to inspect his handiwork. Sadly, if she does not approve, she leaves and he discards the nest and starts over. Monitor lizards are often seen crossing the road and driving has to be done cautiously. These slithering creatures are about half a meter or two feet in length. We came upon another group of elephants passing time under the hot Namibian sun. While these elephants are the same species as their East African counterparts, they can appear leaner and taller due to their diet. They also have slightly longer trunks to allow them to dig into the sand in search of water that might be running underground. Elephants and giraffes live harmoniously together and neither are a threat to each other. We arrived at a small picnic area to get some refreshments and came upon a group of striped mongooses who were also in the mood for some food. Mongooses seem fearless and scavenge any area where scraps of food might be found. These weasel-like creatures forage for insects, scorpions, beetles and millipedes but will also steal bird eggs or snack on street food if the opportunities arise. Elephants spend a great deal of time in the water in an effort to cool down from the high temperatures of this desert land and watching them frolic is fascinating. Adult elephants can eat about 150 kilograms or 400 pounds of food each day consisting mostly of grasses, tree foliage, bark twigs and other vegetation. Amazingly, these giant mammals drink over 200 liters or 50 gallons of water every day. That's about as much as a standard bathtub holds. For those of you who have seen The Lion King, you will know that no animal has more enemies than hyenas. Very few animals cause them fear, but elephants are one of the few who scare them off. Elephants use their tusks to dig in the ground to search out large pieces of soil which they place in their mouth in an effort to feed on the nutrients of the soil. This action frequently results in leaving deep holes, which make vital minerals accessible to other animals. It is important to remember that elephants are wild creatures, and watching these massive mammals can be mesmerizing. People forget how wild these animals really are. Getting out of a vehicle is not a wise idea, and we tried to tell these tourists to get back inside. Their vehicle was in the path of a large elephant, who was not happy with the car in its way, and she could easily flip the vehicle over using her trunk. Fortunately, the threat passed and the elephant moved on, but not without letting everyone know she was in charge. It is difficult to leave an area where there are so many wild animals in their natural habitat. I've had the pleasure of visiting a dozen countries in Africa and nowhere have I seen so many elephants roam free. When we come back, we'll visit with a Himba village and experience life as it has been for hundreds of years. Please join me right after these messages. Welcome back. The Himba people have lived in northern Kalahari Desert for many generations and currently have an estimated population of about 50,000. They're primarily hunters and gatherers and belong to the Bantu family within Niger and the Congo. The women look after the children and the food, while the men are tending livestock in pastures. As we prepare to leave the Atosha region, we came upon an ostrich out for a morning stroll. Traveling the Atosha Pan is a very tedious process. Animals do not respect roads and may jump in front of a vehicle at any moment. Altus did a great job driving me around, while at the same time being constantly on the lookout for animal sightings. Atosha, meaning Great White Place, is a large mineral pan. It measures 130 kilometers long and 50 kilometers wide and is the largest salt pan on the continent. 
Over time, changes in the Earth's climate forced the rivers that once fed the lake to change course and flow into the Atlantic Ocean instead, leaving this vast area to dry out. Wildebeest often migrate over vast distances, and they usually graze in mixed herds with zebra, which gives heightened awareness of potential predators. When commercial farming began in this area in the early half of the last century, wildebeest were shot on an ongoing basis by farmers who feared for the transmission of diseases spread by these skittish animals. Wildebeest, or gnus, as they are sometimes called, are terrified to be by themselves. These migratory animals run in any direction, following the lead of anyone who decides to show the slightest leadership quality. If one runs, they all run. The Atosha pan is mostly clay and mud split into hexagonal shapes as it dries and cracks. It is a rare sight to see it covered in water. Salt springs on the pan have built up into small mounds and are used by some of the region's wildlife as salt licks. During the wet season, parts of the pan form rainwater pools, which remain as the dry season takes over. The dryness of the region makes game watching a treat as most animals, such as this oryx, are forced to visit water holes. Lions are rare in Namibia with a total population of only about 750. When we came upon this mother with a litter of cubs, we naturally had to pull over and watch. Lions traditionally feed at night, and if they manage to kill a large animal, they may gorge and eat up to 30 pounds of meat. They then rest and will not eat for several days. This one had recently eaten and showed no interest in a herd of springbok passing by. We came upon a dick dick and a family of warthogs grazing in the tall grass. Warthogs are members of the pig family, and it's cute to watch a young grazing as their legs are too long for their mouth to reach the grass. The only way for them to eat is on their knees, which make them very vulnerable to predators. As sad as it appears to us, it is just another way of nature controlling the balance. They constantly dig for roots and tubers with their hard noses and their tusks. What most people do not know, however, is that warthogs also eat meat. They've been known to devour their relatives if they're in dire need of minerals. Jackals are medium-sized animals, similar to coyotes or dogs. Their long legs and curved canine teeth are adapted for hunting small mammals, birds, and reptiles. They prefer to rest during the heat of the day, setting out to hunt at dusk and dawn. For the most part, jackals live in harmony with each other, keeping a careful watch in case predators wander nearby. A great place to stop for dinner or a drink in this area is the Atosha Safari Camp. Although sitting in one of its famous bathtub chairs is unique, I don't think it's too comfortable. The resort is well worth a visit, if for no other reason than to view all the paraphernalia and interesting decor on the walls. We had no sooner left the Atosha region when suddenly Altus spotted a leopard right beside our Land Rover. It was as if I could reach my hand out and touch it. It was extremely close and I was leery of rolling the window down to take photographs, but a chance like this does not come along often. Altus cautioned me and explained these cats are so agile it can turn and lunge at me in a split second. It was enough for me to close the window. 
After staying near us for about 20 minutes or so, it ventured off into the high grassy area. At last we reached the Himba village where I was introduced to some of the local inhabitants. Being the only stranger in the village, I certainly received a great deal of attention. I was greeted by several women and was first taken to visit the only school. A small mud brick building which housed all the children in one classroom stood empty as I peered inside. I asked why it was empty and gathered that there was no teacher available. No one spoke English and my Ochehimba is non-existent. I had fortunately brought school supplies and by the hand gestures I could see they were well received. The Himba people have maintained the same customs for centuries. The men do not wish to be photographed and cannot be seen anywhere in the village during the day as they're out tending their livestock. And of course, children will be children. Every morning the women of the village spend three or four hours grinding ochre stones which they mix with clay to make a red paste with which they cover their bodies. This is done to beautify themselves and protect them from the sun's rays. From puberty, Himba women braid their hair and veneer each one with clay and red ochre. They add animal fur as extensions. Mud brick homes are used only for sleeping and getting ready in the mornings. The rest of the time is spent outside. I watched closely as this girl burned herbs to create a smoke which is used as a perfume to keep insects away. Interestingly enough, these people wanted no money or trinkets. They live very full lives and seem to have everything they want. I offered money in exchange for taking their photographs, but everyone refused and only wanted to see their image in my camera's viewfinder. Having cultivated new relationships, I left the village to continue my trek of the Atosha region and headed for my next destination, the Waterberg Plateau. It was a tiring day and a restful night was welcome at the Machala Lodge. It is a fantastic place to stay while visiting this area. The next day I set out to explore the Waterberg Plateau. I came across a Herrera woman and stopped to chat. The Herrera women dress in Victorian style complete with hats and are quite friendly. Sadly in 1904 the Herrera people lost their last and greatest battle against German colonial forces. Subsequently, in this awful massacre, nearly 100,000 people were exterminated during the first genocide of the 20th century. About a thousand escaped into neighboring Botswana, where they received asylum. The Waterberg Plateau is perched high above the plains of the Kalahari Desert in eastern Namibia. It was declared a nature reserve in 1972, mostly because it was inaccessible from below. 
The government relocated several endangered species here to protect them from predators and poaching. The program was very successful and the Waterberg Plateau now supplies other Namibian regions with rare and potentially endangered animals. I could not believe the size of the termite mounds in this area. These tiny insects build homes which can reach as high as 9 meters or 30 feet, and many are more than 500 years old, with a few dating back to biblical times. It appears as if these mounds are built around trees, but in fact the trees have grown through them. Alta stopped a Land Rover and pointed out a small group of rare black wildebeest who kept their distance from us. And what would a trip to Africa be without a rhino sighting? I was a bit concerned at how close they were to us, knowing that the slightest movement would cause them to charge. Fortunately, their eyesight is terrible, and as long as we remain downwind from them, the chance of being noticed is not great. So I was told. All in all, I was quite pleased with what I was able to see in the Atosha region. I did not expect any more encounters with wildlife when we came upon one of the most amazing sightings in Africa. I looked up into a low tree and saw a leopard eating its prey. Its eyes kept darting in our direction, making sure that we were not a threat. The Atosha Pan region of Namibia is an amazing home to elephants, giraffes, zebra and hundreds more creatures. We'll feature the rest of Namibia on a different program and explore all this wonderful country has to offer. For Photos and Travel, I'm Jonathan Van Bilsen. It's been my pleasure to be your tour guide today and I look forward to seeing you next time. If you like this program, please click the subscribe button and you'll never miss an episode.